Hey guys, welcome to my 2023 favorites. I wanted to really narrow it down. I'm not doing any repeats from last year. So if you wanna see more of my yearly favorites, I will have my favorites playlist linked in the cards and I'll try to remember to link it down below, but I still stand by all of those. And a lot of those I still use on a regular basis. It's just, I don't wanna mention them again if I already talked about them. So let's go ahead and start off with makeup because I only have a few things and I feel like this is something that most people are usually interested in. Honestly, like I said, most of my makeup favorites are things that I've been using for the last couple years and they've stayed favorites. But one that I discovered this year and I've been using nonstop. So I've made a big dent in this product. It's the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer. I've talked about this a lot already in my other makeup videos and in a favorites video earlier this year. I don't know if you can tell, but I've definitely hit pan on it. And it's definitely my most used bronzer of the year. I have a few others I like and I'll kind of go back and forth occasionally, but like 80% of the time, I'm using this, it's just my go-to and it is very pigmented and creamy. Definitely recommend this if you're looking for a really good affordable cream bronzer. This is the best one I found at the drugstore. But like I said, a little goes a long way. I feel like you can use this in a lot of different ways though, but if you use it with a brush, I would recommend stippling it on the face. That's what I do. I don't really like swipe to blend because I just feel like that's what works best with this product, but it looks so beautiful on the skin and kind of adds a little bit of extra coverage as well if you have any blemishes in that area where you're bronzing which i really appreciate i realized i like a lot of lawless products this year but i feel like the ones that stood out to me and i'm sure i speak for other people when i say this is their lip products i've recently been talking a lot about this lawless forget the filler overnight lip plumping mask i don't use this overnight because i feel like it's better for daytime it's very thin and lightweight but still feels moisturizing and it has that very slight like minty feeling on the lips but it doesn't tingle it just feels refreshing and kind of makes your lip lines look a little bit more filled in it doesn't like plump a ton but it just makes your lips look smoother and i do feel like the lip products in this line all kind of do the same thing and feel the same. They're not too much, but they just make your lips look a little bit smoother. The other one is the tinted lip balm, and this one is in the shade Georgie. I feel like on camera it shows up a little bit darker, but when you put it on your lips, it's just this really sheer, light, pinky kind of tone, and it just looks so pretty and natural. It's such a good everyday lip and it wears off really evenly. It's not really noticeable. It doesn't smudge or get patchy. It just slowly fades away from your lips, kind of like a stain would. So this is definitely one of my most used everyday lip products of the year. I use this a ton this year, especially during the summertime. My other favorite everyday lip products, because this is just what I wear usually, like a lip like I'm wearing right now, I don't wear very often unless I'm filming, honestly, or if I'm like going out and I want to look really glam. Anyways, another one that I've used a ton this year is the Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oil in the shade Happy. This is just the prettiest pink lip stain. And the way I love to use this one is with a nude lip liner just around the edges of my lips like normal. Something that's definitely lighter than this, like a nude that's maybe a little bit lighter than my lip shade. And then I'll take this in the center of the lips, basically everywhere I didn't apply the lip liner and kind of smudge it together and it just gives this beautiful soft kind of pinky nude lip that looks kind of like naturally smudged if that makes any sense but i just think it's so pretty especially with a clear gloss on top then but let me swatch this one for you guys it's just a really pretty pop of pink without being too bright i do wish they had some nude shades in this uh, rare beauty tint Whoop. but the stain is so natural I don't know if you can still see it on my hand I just wiped it off light pink stain so I feel like kind of works that there's not nudes because you have that really light stain but I do kind of wish they come out with some nude shades though the last lip product is one that's more recent but this has been super popular for a few years though over Black Friday they had a sale and it was just like popping off everyone was talking about these the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. Um, this is the mini size because I wanted to try it out. I have so many lip products. Also watch this one for you. It's in the shade Rose, which is definitely my perfect shade. It's what I would probably repurchase if I buy another one. I put it right next to the stain, so hopefully you can see what's what there. Just a really beautiful like gloss stick kind of formula and just looks so natural on the lips and 
just beautiful honestly makes your lips look so juicy and luscious last makeup product is a blush so i'm still loving all the blushes i've talked about in previous videos in previous years like the merit ones the rare beauty one i just love cream blush and i have multiple that i like but one that i discovered this year and i've really been enjoying is from milk and is their lip and cheek it's in the shade work this is what it looks like again i'll swatch it for you but it's just a really pretty kind of slightly peachy shade it's not too bright but it's not like a nude blush either. And I just think it's a really good versatile kind of shade. Goes with a lot of different looks. It's a formula that I really like because it's not quite as dewy as some of my other cream blushes, but it still leaves a nice healthy glow to the skin without your hair sticking to it or something. So I do feel like that's great for every day if you're not wanting your makeup to look overly dewy. Moving on, let's talk about the perfume and then we'll move on to hair products. I do feel like there's other perfumes that I could have talked about. And just in general, there's probably more products I could have mentioned. I really wanted to narrow it down. Hopefully I don't get to the end of this video and think of other things I could have talked about. But when I think of one perfume that really stood out to me this year specifically, this is a 2023 launch. I wore it so, so much, honestly. During all the seasons, really, this is the Kaoli Yum Pistachio Gelato. It might not look like I have a massive dent, but for how many fragrances I have and the fact that I don't wear it every day, this is like a good dent for me in a perfume. This is the mini size. It smells so, so good. And I get so many compliments on this one without fail. Almost every time that I wear this, I get a compliment on it. And I know a lot of people were saying when this came out that it wasn't what they were expecting. It wasn't as gourmand. But in my personal opinion, it really is. Um, I know a lot of people say they get like a fresh note. And in the beginning, when you first spray this, you do for like a second. But I do feel like I don't notice that as much having had this for a while. I don't really get that note as much anymore. I don't know if sitting in the bottle has changed it or anything. But mostly now I just get like a sweet whipped cream pistachio gourmand scent. Like it really is sweet and gourmand without being heavy so i feel like because of that it is great for spring and summer but it really does thrive in the fall and winter too because it's definitely not like a fresh scent at all it's a lighter gourmand but it is still very sweet and like i said this one gets compliments all the time i think just the fact that i've worn this and i've had people randomly say i smelled like s'mores or cinnamon rolls I think that right there says that this smells like a gourmand, but again, I loved it all year round and I might have to pick up the full bottle when I'm done with this because I feel like it's a staple in my collection at this point. Just one that I really, really love and grab for a lot. Okay, now let's get into the hair products. I've talked about all of these on my channel, so if you watch my hair videos, I'm sure you've heard me mention them. These are the ones that stood out to me this year. I think I discovered all of these this year, like they were new to me it's not like i've had them before and just started using them a lot this year i didn't really include products like that because i've probably talked about them for longer the shampoo and conditioner set that i'm sure you guys can already predict is the pacifica cocoa peptide damage care both of these are just such a good staple like everyday kind of shampoo and conditioner for me i do really grab for these on days where i just need like a basic simple quick wash like, i don't really feel like i need a mask i'm not trying to scrub an oil off of my scalp sometimes i will use this after my rosemary oil if i use like a scalp rinse first which i will show you guys in a minute then i feel like it's fine but a lot of the time i'll go in with a clarifying shampoo after my rosemary scalp treatment just because it is pretty thick and oily but anyways this is just a good like everyday easy set for me i feel like they're both pretty lightweight but they're moisturizing enough for my wavy hair though i don't feel like you have to have wavy hair to use these you could totally use these if you have straight hair because they are more lightweight they're not going to weigh your hair down or anything like that i find i'm not really a big fan of those types of shampoos and conditioners but speaking of the scalp product this is the rizos curls apple cider vinegar scalp and hair rinse i'm pretty much out of this one i used it a ton this year and it's definitely been my favorite scalp rinse to go in with when i feel like my hair needs that extra cleanse or when i have like i said a scalp oil on or something i feel like if i use this i can kind of go over with any shampoo even a more lightweight one like the cocoa peptide and it still cleans my hair really well 
because of this. It's definitely a lathery product. It's very thin and runny, but it does lather up. It's not like apple cider vinegar, just that in a can. You know what I mean? I feel like the Heritage one is more like that, but this is like an actual cleansing product as well. So just keep that in mind, but I really, really liked it. And I feel like I got a lot of use out of this. It took me quite a while to get through the whole bottle, even though I use quite a bit every time I used it. But Rizzo's Curls, especially in last year, has been a favorite brand of mine. I love so much that they come out with. And I actually have another product here from them to talk about as well. This is their Beach Waves Texturizing Salt Spray. I have so many hair products and I switch them out a lot, but this is one I grabbed for so much just for everything, honestly. I used it on refresh days. I used it a lot on wash days and I would pair it with basically anything. Hair creams, gels, mousse, is just spray some of this in my hair at the end of my routine. If I do use a gel, sometimes I'll put it in before gel, but a lot of the time it's just at the end of my styling routine and I'll scrunch it in and I just feel like it gives me that perfect amount of texture, a little bit of extra something, but it's not too heavy at all. It is probably the lightest salt spray that I've used on my hair, but it still does something. It does what I want it to do without being too much and it has Kind of like a slight coconutty scent, so just keep that in mind. It's a little bit summery, but I really use it all year round. It's just such a great salt spray, and I highly, highly recommend it if you're looking for one. This is the best one I've used for sure. I was going to talk about this other shampoo, and then I kind of got distracted with these other products, but the Kinky Curly Come Clean has been my favorite clarifying shampoo. I really fell in love with it. A little goes a long way. It really lathers up. It does make my hair feel like squeaky clean in a sense. So I usually use a mask in place of my conditioner after I use this just for that extra moisture, but it really does its job. I don't think you have to have curly hair to use this. If you feel like you get a lot of scalp buildup or just product buildup in your hair, I think this would be a really good one for all hair types because it cleans really well without completely drying it out. I feel like when I use a mask with this, I have like a great wash day and my hair does not feel dry, but it does feel very clean and lathers up really nicely, like I said. So that's what I want in a clarifying shampoo. Wow, this video is getting really long. Two like curly wavy stylers and then just one more hair product. So the Hask Curl Care Curl Defining Cream was definitely the top affordable curl cream that I discovered this year. It's moisturizing and defining, but something about this is magical in the sense that it gives you volume and I've never seen that with a curl cream. It really adds like this just voluminous body throughout my whole head of hair. And I don't really feel like I've seen a lot of products do that, especially not a curl cream where one product can make that much difference. So. I don't know what's in here, but it's the perfect combination of moisture, definition, and volume, but it's literally so affordable. It's like a medium texture. I wouldn't say it's like overly, overly thick, but it's not as like thin and lightweight as the JVN hair cream or the Brio Gio. It's a little bit thicker than that, but it doesn't feel heavy or weigh your hair down at all, and I think this would work for most curl types. Honestly, I can't think of someone that this wouldn't work for, let me know if you have tried this and didn't like it, but I feel like this would work for a lot of different people. And then the gel this year that I discovered from the drugstore is the Aussie Instant Freeze Sculpting Gel. This is so strong hold, like it will make your hair feel kind of stiff when you apply it. So just keep that in mind. I will use this when I want really defined, like scrunched up waves that are gonna hold really well. I think it's actually a really beautiful combination to use these two together because you get like the volume and the definition and it holds really well and it just gives me a really good wash day. But if you want really nice clumps, I think pairing this with like the JVN cream or a thicker leave-in conditioner even and then brush styling and applying this, such good clumps and just like juicy curls. So definitely a good one if you want a really intense gel, but just keep in mind it is intense. So if you want something more lightweight, this is not gonna be it for you. It definitely is like an instant freeze, but it doesn't leave any kind of flakiness in my hair and the cast scrunches out beautifully with an oil. So definitely another affordable one I recommend. I love when I have good affordable products to talk about. And then last hair product is a hairspray. So this is the Bedhead Masterpiece Extra Stronghold Hairspray. I heard Jessica Braun talk about this and I know it's a lot of people's favorite hairspray. I do really really love this especially for like slicked styles or i want my hair to hold really well without being like overly crunchy or flaky i feel like 
if I'm gonna use a hairspray, I want it to work, and this one really does. This is just the mini because I don't use hairspray that that often, and I've just been wanting to try it out this year. So once I run out, I'll go out and pick up the large bottle, and I don't know if I'll purchase another hairspray, honestly. This is like the one for me. Moving on to skincare, we're almost to the last category. These are the products that I used a ton this year that really stood out to me. I think this is the one I've had the longest, the Fresh Floral Recovery Calming Mask. I might have had it before this year, but I really used it a ton this year. This is a lot of product. It's 3.3 fluid ounces, so it takes me a long time to get through this. It really is like a calming, moisturizing cream mask, I guess you could say. It's an overnight thing. You put it on like a moisturizer and don't wash it off but it's something that I use when I feel like I want my skin to calm down a little bit so it's not something I use every night and I don't use it during the day so that's why it's taking me a long time to get through this but I really really like this one I just wish it wasn't so expensive it's really really pricey for this but I do like that you get a lot of product and I think if you can find it on a sale like I think they had it 50% off during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. So if you can find it in a case like that, I think it's worth trying out because it is such a good product for those kind of nights when I feel like I just want something really thick and moisturizing and kind of calming on my skin. The Ordinary Organic Cold Press Rosehip Seed Oil. Really just rosehip seed oil in general is just so great for your skin. I feel like it's been helping not only my acne scars, which is what it claims to really help with but also my actual breakouts like i feel like it calms them down it's just such a good face oil this one is super affordable you can also find rose hip seed oil from other brands or even on amazon and i just think it's a really good step to have in your skincare routine i use this one a lot last skincare product is a cleanser i'm almost out of this one i have really flown through it because it's like the only cleanser i use these days it's perfect for me and it's affordable and that's all I really need. The CeraVe Hydrating Cream to Foam Cleanser. I also really like the First Aid Beauty one. I think it's from the same line as the Ultra Pear Cream. It's like their cream gentle foaming cleanser or something. I really like that, but it is more pricey. And I feel like this does the exact same thing for more affordable. So you get more product, it's cheaper. I just prefer using this one because of that, but both of them work really well. I just love how it lathers into this really creamy lather but it doesn't make my skin feel so intensely tight and stripped afterwards like a lot of cleansers do that foam up the way I want them to. I want it to foam up and clean, but I also want my skin to not feel stripped. I also do like the one from Marion May. That one is a recent discovery though. I'm not going to mention anything that I've only been trying for the past month or two. Um, I really wanted to mention things that I've been using for like a bigger chunk of the year and also like I said this one is affordable you really can't go wrong with the price point and the amount of products you get and all of that so that is it for like beauty products I did want to mention a couple of books even though it's not really something I do that much on my channel I'm getting on my kindle because I have like a list of all the books I've read this year that way it'll just be easier for me to talk about things. I'm really more of a fiction girl. I don't really read that much nonfiction, but I probably should. I think maybe that should be a goal for 2024 to read some nonfiction books. I finished the Akatar series this year. Actually just finished A Court of Silver Flames a few weeks ago. So it took me a long time to get through all of them because I really spread it out. I read the first two at the end of 2022, kind of read the last three spread out this year this past year, last year, I guess. So those were definitely like a favorite for me. I really liked them, honestly. A lot of the books I read, I did feel like were kind of so-so. I really liked Say You Swear from Megan Brandy. I was kind of in a reading slump over that time, kind of middle of the year, summertime-ish. So it took me a long time to read that book, but I don't think it's any fault of the book. I really think in any other situation, I would have read that book really fast for the fact that it's over 500 pages. It's a really good, just like young adult read. It is about a group of college friends, but it was really entertaining and I did cry at one point. The ending is really like heartwarming, I feel like. So I did really like that one if you're into romance. These are just some of the ones I really enjoyed throughout the year. Also really liked Book Lovers by Emily Henry. And then my last like romance rom-com type of read was Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, which is the only actual physical book that I have of the ones I'm talking about. I read a couple other physical books, but they weren't like absolute favorites of mine. And I'm just wanting to talk about the ones I really liked. So this one was just a good like childhood friends to lovers kind of trope. 
and it was a little bit funny and really sweet and I just really enjoyed this one and I feel like it takes me a little bit longer sometimes to get through physical books because I don't love reading them in bed. It's, I just can't get as comfortable as I do with like my Kindle or my phone or something. But I do feel like for the fact that this was a physical book, I read it pretty quickly because it was just one that was kind of a page turner for me. So that is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. And then the last book is probably my favorite read of the year, which I know is everybody's. It's Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I do feel like I got more into fantasy this year, but I do think it's some of it was a little bit hard for me to follow at times. So this one I feel like is super great for if you're getting into fantasy, but it's still really well written and the world building is done really well and keeps you interested and wanting to turn the page from the beginning of the book. The second you open this book, I feel like in the first couple chapters, you're hooked already because it just really gets you into it right away. But I do think that you should go in blind and not know too many details because I prefer that with books, especially this one. I feel like I really enjoyed the fact that I didn't know much about it before reading it, but I just had heard a ton of people talk about it. So I wanted to check it out and I ended up really enjoying it again. I know that's a very predictable answer for like my favorite book, but I can't lie, like I really liked it. Anyways, that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to making a lot of content this year, so hopefully I can be super consistent. And I thank you guys for all your support. I love you and I will see you in my next one. Bye.